Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Topaz Labs updated Gigapixel AI to version 7.0.0. This is a significant update because it's been just a few days short of an entire year since the last time Topaz Labs issued an update for Gigapixel AI. As a matter of fact, I thought they abandoned the application and that they were putting all their resources into Photo AI. Thankfully, that turned out to not be true. This is a significant update. They've rebuilt the entire application from the ground up. They claim that it works faster and it works better and it's compatible with a more varied array of graphics processors. So with that, in today's video, we're going to test it in several different situations where I feel you may need Gigapixel AI. For example, the first situation is probably the most common situation. You took a photo of something and it's really far away and you cropped in super tight. For example, I have this image of the Blue Jay. It was taken quite far away and I had to crop in. This is a really tiny crop. It's only 1000 by 1000. You could see that there's some JPEG artifacts in the background and the bird overall is a bit blurry. So I want to enlarge this with Gigapixel AI and we'll see how well Gigapixel AI can not only enlarge this image, but sharpen the bird and reduce those JPEG artifacts. Now the second and third situations are when you have images that you scanned, old images that you scanned. For example, I have this image of my mother, my father, and myself that was taken in 1966. And you can see it's just a really small scan and it's a bit blurry. You can see my mother's face particularly really blurry. So we need to not only enlarge this, but enhance it with Gigapixel AI. And I've done videos in the past talking about how great of a job Gigapixel AI does on these old scans. Uh, the second example will be a black and white image because it does a great job on black and white scans as well. This is my mother on her wedding day. You can see that was relatively blurry. The um, fourth example is when you just have, let's say you found a thumbnail somewhere and it's a really small, tiny image and it's graphic art usually. And it, when you, you know, want to blow it up, it's going to look horrible. Well, this is where Gigapixel usually does a good job as well. So I have this old or this Lightroom Classic logo that's very small, only 100 pixels by 100 pixels. And we're going to blow that up. And finally, we have this image here. It's only 1,000 pixels on the long edge, but you can see there's a lot of people on it. And you can see that like a lot of the people are, they're blurry. See how they're blurry? Uh, Gigapixel AI does have technology in it that will enhance a person's face. So I wanna try to blow this image up, but also enhance everyone's face so they're, they're sharper in the photo. So we're gonna try that last. So let's take this first image of the Blue Jay and let's open it up into Gigapixel AI. Now, when it opens up, or if it opens up in Gigapixel AI, you can see it's done already. So they, they have made it faster. All right, there's the before, okay? See how it's kind of blurry. It's not super sharp. And there's the after. There's before, and there's the after. I also could get a before on before by just clicking on the image and holding the left mouse button in. So there's before. And there's after, there's before, and there's after. Now let's look at some of the settings. As far as resize mode, I have it to 6x. You can see that originally this image was 1000 by 1000. At 6x, it's going to output it at 6000 by 6000. And if you're new to photography and you're wondering, well, what's the significant of this? Um, if you were to print this image at 1000 by 1000, you wouldn't be able to get a high quality large print from it. So you may send this, let's say, off to a lab and say, I want a 20 inch by 20 inch print. And they're going to tell you they cannot do it, that the um, resolution of the image isn't big enough. Well, you'd use an application like Gigapixel AI to get a bigger resolution, 6,000 by 6,000, then send it off to the lab and get it printed. And you can see not only does Gigapixel AI scale everything up, they improve it. So they make it sharper, they reduce noise, and they'll get rid of, or at least reduce some of these JPEG artifacts that are in the background as well. So that's why you would want to do it. Now, as far as AI model, you could see that there are eight to choose from. I have it set to auto, and because I have it set to auto, it chose low resolution as the AI model. 
And I have the settings set to auto as well. And it has minor denoise set to 13 and minor de blur set to 77. And face recovery and gamma correction really aren't necessary. Face recovery, obviously, it's not a person. And gamma correction will help your blacks. Uh, you get a little more detail in blacks. Let's see if that does anything. Now, if anything, that made it worse. So we'll leave that off. So you could see that we're done. And when you are done, you could save the image. Uh, you could save it as several different file types. Um, you could save it to JPEG, PNG, TIFF, or DNG. Just preserve the input format. You could say where you're going to save it to. And then you could give it the file name and a suffix if you want. Now, I'm not going to take the time to save this. I think you get the idea of how this works with an image that was heavily cropped. So let's get rid of this image and let's open up one of those old images that were scanned. Let's go with the color one first. And this one, I don't want to scale up 4X or 6X. I'll just do it 4X. This will be 2440 by 1972. You can see it's done already. It chose low resolution again as the mode. There's before and there's after. Now my eyes look a little funny here. So I'm going to turn on face recovery. And then you can see here, you, it's going to have to take a second to render. You can see. And that actually looks a little better. So there's before and there's after. Now, just because you had it on auto and it chose low resolution, you could try other settings as well. And even if you have settings on auto, if you think there's still a little noise in there, you could move minor to noise to the right. If you think it should be sharpened a bit more, take minor to blur to the right. You could do any of that. So let's try something else. Let's go to very compressed. You have to, again, wait for it to render. There's a little circle up here. That looks about the same. Uh, let's try standard version two. We'll just try that very quickly. So you could click through. That one doesn't look as good. Standard version one, we could try that. Lines, art, stuff like that, you'd probably use more on you know, graphic art. You're not going to use it on something like this. So low resolution turned out to be the better of the, the ones, at least for this image. But you could see how much it improves it. There's before and there's after. And if I zoom us in a bit, there's before and there's after. Again, there's before and there's after. So it does a really nice job. All right, we'll get rid of that. Let's open the black and white uh, image that's an old film scan. Uh, this one here, let's go down here to the zoom to fit. And it's on auto and it shows standard as face recovery is on. All right, so there's before. Oh no, it's still enhancing. I'm sorry, Sam, not waiting. I mentioned you have to wait. So you, you can see right here, it gives you this kind of um, circle that's showing you how long it's going to take. And for this image, it's taking a bit longer. I have found actually for black and white images, it does take a bit longer than color images. You would think it would be the other way around, but um, it does seem to take longer with black and white images. So we'll let it do its thing. And when it's done, it will give us the new look. And it's there. Okay, there's before. And there's after. There's before. And there's after. Now that looks pretty good. There's before. You can see how it's a lot blurrier. And there's after. It cleared up her face pretty good. Now gamma correction, as I mentioned, if you look in the blacks, it may be able to give you a little more detail in the black areas. So we'll turn that on. You can see, yes, it did give us more detail in the hair. There's before gamma correction. Whoops. And after gamma correction. So maybe a little more detail. You could, um, if you don't like standard version two, you could try low resolution. I found works pretty good. Again, you got to let it render so you could see it's enhancing up here in the navigator window. So just let it finish. That actually looks a lot better. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. Try very compressed. My mother was 18 when she got married. Things are a lot different today, but she was 18 when she got married. She gave birth to my brother when she was 20. She gave birth to me when she was 30. So she had us spread out. <laughs> All right, there's before and there's after. So I think low resolution or very compressed are the ones for this. And you can see that it's not the automatic model I used. It was one of the others. Automatic was version, standard version two. So... 
That works really well. So let's get rid of that. Now let's uh, go to that logo. That's a really low res logo, something you probably scraped off the internet, right? See how little it is. Let's um, zoom it to 400. Let's, can we zoom it even more? Fit to screen. There we go. Okay. Let's uh, go with auto AI model and previews updated. So there's before and there's after. You can see how it really cleans it up, right? There's before and there's after. You could try very compressed. There's before, there's after art. There's before and there's after. There's lines. That one doesn't look good. You can see all this mess over here. That's all cleaned up with art. There's before, there's after. If you want to make it a little sharper, try moving the blur to the right. Um, ones I found for logos or any type of graphic art, the high fidelity ones never work well on those. You can see how it's all messed up. So in this one, I think the art worked pretty good. Sick. Take gamma correction off. See if that does anything. Doesn't really affect it. We'll take, there's no face here, so we'll turn that off. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. You could see then how it clears up something like that. Does a great job. We'll get rid of that. And finally, let's go to the one with all the different faces. So this is this Adobe stock image here. And let's take our little line all the way over here. Let's put this on auto. Let's put face recovery on. We'll keep gamma correction off and we'll put our settings on auto. All right. And we'll let it recover faces. You can see in the top right hand corner underneath the navigator window, how it's got this little circle kind of telling us how long away it is. It's enhancing and now it's done, but I have this line all the way over. So let's go slowly. There's the after. Look at that. That did a great job. Cleaned up everyone's face. See how like there's uh, just this JPEG artifacts like interface here. Blurry, blurry. This is just camera blur out because you can't, it's hard to focus on, have everyone in perfect focus when their faces are at different depths from the lens. But you could see how it cleaned everything up. It looks great. So it's going from 1,000 by 667 pixels to 4,000 by 2,668 pixels. And it improved the entire image. And this, we'll do it this way. Here's before. And there's after. You can look right around this guy's glasses here. There's before. And there's after. So I think that's pretty good. Did a great job. We'll try this gamma correction, see if we see a little more detail in the darker areas. It's got a render. Maybe, it's hard to tell. There's before and there's after. All right, that's the update to Gigapixels version 7.0.0 .0 now. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.